Hello, 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 everybody. It's your girl, Ashley, the amateur expert, coming to you live today for this episode of Talk Tuesday. Super excited to have you here with us. Super excited for our guest to share his journey. Um, I am incredibly excited. I don't know, it's a good day. Um, we're wearing a new Affirmed Armor shirt. Be sure to check us out, uh, affirmedarmor.com, and follow us on um, on IG at, at Affirmed Armor. We are going to be interviewing Ian, and he's in the room. So if this is your first time joining us, Thank you. Also, uh, just to give you a recap of what we do on the show, we're going to talk to Ian about his career path. We're going to talk about talk about what he thought success was when he, when he was younger compared to what he thinks success is now, and the tips and motivators that he used along the way, and any any other fun things that come up. So he's in the room. So we're going to get started. Thank you so much for joining. Happy Talk Tuesday, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am well. Thank you so much for joining us yeah. today. Lovely day out here today. For sure. I love the background. It's giving good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. Right, right, right. Um, so, I mean, I think we can just jump right on in. So, um, Ian, I'm excited that we've been connected. And if you could, please, could you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are and what you are doing currently for yeah. work. Um, I'm Ian, everybody. Pronounce Ian, long I. Uh, so right now for work, I'm like, uh, I do a lot of different things and I try to like find um, the definition for what that is. Mm -hmm. like, even in my bio, I just say be everything. Um, but right now, um, I'm a creative director, I'm an artist, I produce. Um, I, I'm actually also a little secret. I'm actually also a personal trainer, too. I also do that on the side as well. Let's see, I'm going to need your rates yeah. because the way right, right. quarantine 15 don't no, pile up. for real, up. for real, yeah. <laughs> for real. Oh, man. Um, okay, so I love that. We we also, we love multi-hyphenates on the show. So we're not just one thing. We do multiple things. Yeah. Um, and it's not what we do, it's who we are, which is also important. Um yeah. And so what I want to now ask you is when you were young, when you were a little boy, what did you want to be when you grew up and sort of what was the motivating factor behind that? Right. So for me, I would say that when I started coming up, I wanted to be like an astronaut or something like that, I think. Like that? Because um, I was really always obsessed with like space and like all the different planets and all mm -hmm. that stuff. I always thought that was really cool. But then I also did have like a, a, a I had like I had hoop dreams. I played okay. basketball in college. Um, yes. So that I also wanted to like be in the NBA and do all these things like that. And I've always done music. So like I always thought that was like a really cool uh like it was just always something fun for me to do. And mm -hmm. like I never thought I'd do it for work, but I knew I'd always be doing it. I love you that. Know? So Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, I, I, I love planetariums growing up. Loved yeah, yeah. planetariums. Never really thought about going to space, but just loved being in that space. It just felt so right. like majestic and like just so grand. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, just yeah. that you wanted to be an astronaut. Um, and so what did you think success was when you were younger? Uh, to me, hey, success... Success kind of came through because, again, I was really, really heavy into sports. Mm -hmm. So success seemed like winning. Like there was a mm -hmm. definition, mm -hmm. like a winner and a loser at the end of a game. Yeah. Or a trophy or some type of accolade in that sense, you know. Or um, success is like production, like scoring points. You know what I mean? Like I also thought that was success. Mm -hmm. However many points you can score, the most you can score, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I always thought that was, um, you know, just being the the person, you know, like the Kobe's, the Michael Jordans, the LeBrons, you know, being sure. that is success. Yeah. Notoriety, um, being skillful, being skillful. Um, yeah. I think just great, right? They are masters of their craft. 
So right, I, right. I think that's something. Um, I think that's a good definition as a as a youngster, um, or like good how grades, you sort of process good grades. It. You can see, yeah. You know, we're on a grading system. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that was also something for me that, oh, this you have to get this mm-hmm. to. There was always like a benchmark. Like yeah. I always felt like. It wasn't until I got a little older that I started to create my own, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, I feel like when you're younger, you're like you said, you what is your definition? What does that mean to win mm-hmm. and all these and that, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, sometimes, you know, you'd lose a game and you'd be super mad and upset about it. But then you don't want to look like like a, a sore loser. So, so, that, mm-hmm. so you even you lose twice in that sense. So it's like even in a loss, I could win by not being a sore loser learn from my mistakes, stuff like that. So then, therefore, you know, did we really lose, you know, right. at that point? So I can still be successful in a loss. That's yeah. what sports taught me a lot of the times because, you know, can't win them all. You can't win them all. That's a dope philosophy to accept, um, especially from a young age. That's why I also think it's super important for um, children to do and be a part of sports because it, there are right. so many soft skills that you learn, Um by, 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 by participating. Um, that's dope. Okay, so share with us your journey. So we went from astronaut to, you know, hoop dreams to now this music um, or a person who is, you know, very much so in the artistic space, right? Creative director is still sort of trying to define what it is. But um, mm-hmm. how did you fall or start to settle into this space that you are in currently? Um, one thing that I always tried to set out to do was do the things that felt good and that came natural. And I did the things that I love to do. I go, I actually go and talk to like kids at schools and stuff like that now. And it's so funny because it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to tell people, I don't always use my path as an example because I'm, I'm, I'm a young black man. I play basketball and I do music. Mm-hmm. And they think a lot of times this is the only way that we can get out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what I have found that's more helpful and more beneficial for people is to try everything. Do everything that you feel like, you know, your path is going to take a certain routing and it's mm-hmm. not going to look so straight line as we think it's going to be. For sure. So for me, in my path, I got lucky that I hit these highlighted points that I feel like a lot of uh, people aspire to do, but there were so many different things within that. You know, at one point being up at school playing ball, like I painted the dorm rooms in the summertime. So that was like a job for me at the time. You Mm -hmm. you still had to figure out how to earn money. I'm, uh, you know, walking dogs at the Humane Society. Like, so there's people who take care of that. Like, that's a Mm -hmm. whole lane. Like, there's so many different um, avenues and paths that everybody can take. So I always encourage people to just pick what you're passionate about first. Mm-hmm. And then all those other things can, to get to that. But so my, my journey kind of started with, you know, the love and the passion, like with my, uh, with my um, dad, my mom, you know, they were really into music. I kind of okay. found that to be just something very interesting to me. I could always hear the notes and the mm. beats I remember listening to nothing but a G thing. And I just remember so many different sounds in that beat, you know, Mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh dad, look how, and and for some reason that always stuck out to me. And then I learned, then I started to learn how to record myself. You know, I don't know if anybody knows what cassette tapes are, but there was a cassette and we had like a boom box and I'd put one cassette in and I'd record, I hit play and that record. And then I could hear myself and then I'd rewind it and play it back. I had a bunch of blank tapes, right? Yeah. So yeah. then one time, like I recorded me beatboxing on one. Yeah. And I had two, I had two boom boxes. So I recorded yeah. on one and played that one and recorded on this one. And then it was like a two track going into one. So then I had made a little tape. It was iDog Records. It was like a whole thing. Like, and I'm telling you, I gotta be like twelve, thirteen at the time. I'm loving the the right. uh, this whole story. Right. And then, so then after that, then the computer age and the internet age came to be. And then I just went like pretty digital with it and like started getting on the computer, figuring out how to download different uh, mm-hmm. digital audio workspaces, you know, figured out how to download Autotune because T-Pain was really big at the time. Lil Wayne was really big at the time. So it's like everybody was using the tune. So I was yeah. just like, 
I just wanted that sound because that was yeah. what, what was cool. If you didn't have that, then now everybody uses it. And now it's more used and accepted as a tool and not like. For sure. You, like a voice augmenter. A voice augmenter. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. So then I started to really dive in and dig in. And even that helps me out now because technically speaking, I'm an engineer as well because mm -hmm. I, I just know shortcuts and keys on the computer that I've taught myself over the years of just making my workflow a lot easier. Cause you okay. tell a computer what to do, it'll do it. But if you don't know what to tell it, it'll give you trouble. So I had, I was like, I'm sick of calling somebody all the time to mm -hmm. fix it. So I just got into computers and, you know, try to figure it out like that. So yeah, man. And then, uh, then eventually I was in college and I was doing my thing there. And that's where I first got my confidence to be like an artist, like that people know me as I and J instead mm -hmm. of I and Jackson. Mm -hmm. My name is, my artist name is the same pronounce, pronunciation as my real name. I just shut it down, cut it down a little bit. And I put the Y in there because everybody's always messing up my name saying <laughs> Ian. So I was like, yo, let's talk about, look, look, Jake, he's, he's from my college swag talk. That was one of the songs that we did back then. But uh, so then I cut it down. You know, we're talking MySpace times. I'm like, oh, let me put the Y in there and the X in there and it'll make it look cool. And then uh, it was really cool. So then after that, then we're getting into a space where now I come out to California because, again, I'm playing basketball. I'm going in between mm, okay. here and there, like in the summers and on my winter breaks and stuff. And uh, my brother was actually signed to Atlantic Records. And so at that point, then I, I had a lot of experience working in that space in a major sure. uh, environment you know what I so, mean so quick question for you what did yeah. you study while you were in school exercise science okay oh, this makes it even better okay keep yeah, going yeah 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 so then you know as i'm learning and trying to figure out everything with the music game because i'm just like soaking up all types of information mm -hmm. you know i'm just trying to figure out like why do why do we use that why don't we use this you know um uh, what, what does a vocal producer do? Why do why do we need that? And then I started asking questions of like, how much does that cost? Oh, like we're paying that much money for this time. How much is studio time? Because again, coming from being on a on a team, I always um, it was like the equivalent to me to compare like your gym, like a, a basketball gym, okay. in the studio. So uh, I was like, as okay. an artist to get stronger at your skills, you should be in the studio. As a basketball player, you should be in the gym. Be in the gym. Be yeah. working on your shot. I can go in the gym anytime. Unless you have your own thing, you have to pay somebody to be in that studio. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, then I started to learn about how all that started to work. And then uh, over time, it's just like you start to realize you want to do what you want to do and not um, do what the majors are trying to like, like they're trying to, sculpt this cookie cutter thing because i think yeah. there's a formula right but mm -hmm. i believe in a higher calling than that you know what i mean i believe you got these things are coming from within us like through a better like from a for a more enlightened place whatever so it's like then after that then you know me and trevor we started to really figure out like let's just do this stuff on our own and then we just been kind of taken off from there and like every next step has kind of led to another another door that we've had to unlock and like, you know, yeah. another, another piece of armor that we've been able to build. So one of the things that I hear as like the underlying um, uh, theme in this story is a high level of curiosity and mastery, right? And mm. so there's something that continues to pique your interest. And once your interest is peaked, it's like, all right, how am I going to get to it, right? How right, am I going to be the right. best at it? Or maybe not even the best. How am I going to surround myself with the best so that I can learn from them um, right, and, right. and put my own spin on it, um, which I think Put is, your ego to the side. For you know? sure. And I think yeah. that that is so, such a good... Um, such such a good space to be in because I feel like you're you're always you give yourself room to always continue to grow um, and, and build with even just with not just yourself with, but with a team. So I I appreciate right. you sh we sh you sharing that. Um, so what is your idea of success today? Like I said today, I think it's about 
being happy, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, we it doesn't matter if you have if you're a billionaire, you can still get a divorce. You know, are you happy with that? You have to make those decisions. You know, so for me, it's just about being happy, doing what doing what you love to do, being able to have a choice in your day and be like, look, these are the choices that I want to make. Mm-hmm. Um, taking advantage of that free will. Other than that, I don't really go by anything else because it doesn't really matter in the long run, in my opinion. I think that's dope. Um, okay, what is something that you have learned or you're still in the process of learning that you wish you had learned sooner? Mm, something that I've learned. Something that I've learned. One thing that you're going to always have to do with uh, deal with is other people. So you definitely need to know how to work with people like some people don't and they don't care to and that's fine i'm just not one of those types of people i can do things on my own but you know if you're gonna be around you might as well be a good time or like bring you know more more good energy to the environment you know so you'll get a lot farther i feel like doing that um and again another turn another like uh underlying tone is longevity because I'm mm-hmm. thinking I'm thinking down the line you know for sure because I feel like a lot of people like they'll step on people just to get to just the next step you know you know that person that tries to speed past you yeah. and get to a red light yeah and then you you end up <laughs> right next to him you're like yeah you were doing all that you know what I'm saying so I kind of just like that and then something that I wish I would have learned a little earlier in life um just start it sooner like I started it but I'm just saying, like, make that page. If you want to make that page, do it now. If you're gonna start that that little that little um, you know, you want to do a fashion line or make sweaters or do whatever, just do it now. Find find a way. You know, always had like a really good uh, support system around me, and my parents were always like, you know, go for it, go for it. You know what I'm saying? My friends were always like, go for it, go for it. You need that around you. That's so important. Um, so, so sleep so important. was good. Hey, everyone, Jordan. Thank you so much uh, for tapping in. Um, Yeah, I think um, you said something earlier that made me think of something you said. Um, I read one of the comments and it threw my mind off to go somewhere else. Okay, so you mentioned, oh, I know what I was going to say, that um, I've heard from um, some of my supervisors um, or just people in the industry that, most times there are if if they had to choose between two people to hire they would choose the person with less experience um if they had a bad attitude or they were stuffy to be around um they would prefer to have someone who is teachable someone who has a good heart and someone who just has a good uh spirit and so um i think that sort of taps into what you were sharing um Mm -hmm. that you know in this industry or just in life right like you need people, um, and it's always better to be a good team member. Um, exactly, yeah. Not just with pro- productivity, but how you treat people. Right, right. Because even to get what you want, you may have an adversary that looks just like you or that looks differently from you. Either way it goes, you're going to come up against another person. And mm-hmm. even in those moments, I'm not trying to chop anybody's head off, you know what I mean, at the end of the day. You know, what, what I also had learned, too, that I didn't know when I was younger is, damn, sometimes I am going to have to pull that sword out, you know? Mm, I have to pull talk that about sword that. Out. What do you Maybe mean when like, you say that? Like, sometimes I am going to have to cut people off. Sometimes I am going to have to stand my ground. I am going to have to stand for what I believe in. And sometimes that is at the expense of maybe a friendship or maybe mm-hmm. somebody that you thought was there for you uh, but wasn't, you know what I mean? And I always kind of felt like, well, you know, you got to forgive, you know, like, maybe they don't know, forgive them, for they do not know, and right. like, Amen. it's mm-hmm. all right, you know what I mean, and I still have that grace, I show people grace, but at the end of the day, if I got to, I'm gonna go ahead and let it be known, you know, like, because, and that's why, like, Born Art, we're called Born Art Wave Runners, and our mascot is a shark, mm-hmm. the reason why I personally like the shark is because they always call these businessmen like sharks or whatever mm-hmm. and then also too i'm like well we're sharks too you have to understand what waters you're swimming in you know 
Because a lot of times they they want to take advantage of us and look at us like little guppies or something. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, we're all on the same. If not, I'm not I'm trying better. to say I'm better or not. I'm just saying I know what I, I have. I, know what I, I have. love that. I love so, that. Yeah. I, I There's like a, a a thing where back where I'm from, I'm from born in Marion, Indiana. I'm from Indianapolis. But we say that we bully bullies. Like I'm not, mm. I'm not afraid of like somebody that wants to kind of. I'd rather stick up for somebody to bully a bully rather than. For be, sure. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, that's dope. And it, it's crazy is is that so I'm like, you know how you get like little confirmations throughout the day. Yeah. And so last night, so I have a clothing line called Affirmed Armor, and last night I was like, all right, what's the next? What are we about to do next? So I literally made this shirt today before. Um, before we got on and so the concept of the brand is to remind you of a truth you've forgotten about yourself or to give mm. yourself affirmation um to to get through the day and so we've got a firm armor on the chest and then nice. the Afri- the new affirmation that i swear i just put pulled out today is choose grace oh yes choose grace and i'm like whoa god okay i see what you did there okay yeah. but Yes, no, let's bully the bullies. Let's be, we are sharks. It, we're, it's all on, we're all on the same, um, on the same uh, playing field. And I, I, what I like to tell people is that like, you know, we have the same 24 hours as Beyonce. Now granted, exactly. we may not have the same access. We may not have the same resources, but right. we can get there, right? And it's yeah. how you choose to spend mm. your time and day, um, in your days, I should say, to yeah. to to get where you're trying to go. So um, yeah. I appreciate you sh- you sharing that with us. And um, I think that I think also too that with that same 24 that somebody else has, I think also what's really cool is like I think God put us all here for specific individual purposes. Mm-hmm. So it's like as much as we can look at somebody else because. You know, we're we're on social media. Comparison killed the cat. You know, everybody's always trying to like compare themselves, and it's just like we have to just work with what we have because that's gonna unlock our blessing. Like that's supposed to be for us, okay. you know. And just finding peace in that, you'll be fine. If you're so struggled and uh, you stress out about what somebody else got, you're gonna always feel you always feel that uh, uneasy. I don't yeah, like, and, de- like and, that, defeated, and defeated yeah, and defeated because you'll never right. you'll never get to what where they are because that's their lane. That's their thing, exactly. Yeah, that's dope. Um, this is this has been a really good conversation. Um, so one thing that I think I'm gonna start asking people um, on a weekly basis is because we talk about success a lot. Um, I want to talk about failure and how you how do you rebound from that. So um, what's something, and I know you mentioned early on about um, sports and like losing a game and how it wasn't really a loss. Um, right. You're able to, you know, sh- shift it and have a mindset shift and see right. it as a, as a win. Um, can you give us another time maybe um, later on in life where you experienced the failure and how you were able to um, mm-hmm. either bounce back or see it as um, some level of success? Um, can you hear me? Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so, um, one thing, something that's taught, taught me, I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as failure, because, um, I'm really big on just, like, speaking things into it, so, like, I'm like, you know, I always try to, like, put it Mm -hmm. in a certain way, so it makes sense for me, but, like, even when in relationships, when relationships don't go well, and they don't turn out the way that you may have thought, Mm -hmm. technically when it doesn't work out it's a failure but like I find that I found the the deepest parts of myself when I didn't win in those relationships and by winning I would be you know have kids be married have the whole nine you know what I'm saying so it's all right that we're not there just yet but I feel like I've always evolved every single time it was only maybe like one time two times that I feel like where I kind of recluse back like I went backwards and, you know, Mm -hmm. that's me, that's me trying to think of, uh, because I'm thinking, Oh, I'm supposed to be in this. I'm supposed to be in this. Right. Um, but sometimes like we were talking about pulling out that sword, sometimes you got to cut ties, you know, um, because that's the best thing for you to do, you know, but other than that, 
Like I said, when it comes when it comes to like just everyday life stuff though, like in like work stuff and whatever, like what else am I gonna do with my time? I'm just filling up my day with things to do. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like sometimes. Like, cause to me, the the real battle and the struggle is going on within myself. That's what I'm trying to like win at life all the time, mm-hmm. you know. Cause again, I'm in the space. I bring an energy to the environment. So if I'm not feeling right, if I'm feeling off, then people are gonna feel it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be the reason for that, but you know, uh, I also feel like that's that's why it's good to have that support system around you, so you can kind of confide and talk about those things. And have a soft place to land, you For know, sure. or or a, a tough kick in the ass whenever you need one. Well, you know? Sometimes you need one or two. Yeah, yeah exactly. So um, that's where I would say I found the most growth through failures is through intimate relationships. Mm, that's actually really good, and that's also one of the, that's one of the main reasons why I started the line. Um, I had gone through a a divorce actually. Mm-hmm. And as I was going through the divorce, um, God gave me this whole brand, this whole thing, like, you know, right. like I said, um, remind yourself of the truth you've forgotten about yourself. And so I right. think a lot of times when you go through breakup, um, or feel like you're at a loss, right? It's right. Um, you start to have feelings of unworthiness or feelings like, you know, you right. weren't, um, if it's if it work, you weren't competent or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, no, I, you know, I am smart. I am enough. I am, you know, uh, I, I choose grace, right? And, I, and how I handle right. situations. Right. Um, but it's uh, just, just dope that you, that you mentioned that. And I think it's just great that, someone of your caliber is, is able to express that especially yeah. i think i don't i think we don't hear that from men enough so thank you right right right, right. Yeah, <laughs> thank, yeah. thank you for that's sharing that's a big that's that. a big deal like because a lot of times we don't talk about that stuff but it's like we all want the same things you know what i'm saying just like women like you guys it's good to hear certain things from you guys sometimes too and it's just like we have to all like work together to really know what the other person's thinking because yeah. I, I don't know what it feels like to be a woman you know what I mean? I just don't, I could never relate. And I, and I uh, appreciate and acknowledge the separation of that. You know, mm-hmm. I don't look at it like I'm not jealous of it or I'm not like resentful of that. It's right. like, I'm intrigued. I'm like, I want to, what, what's going on through your mind? You know, like, and I'm open whatever you, when you tell me whatever it is, mm-hmm. I'm open to like hearing it instead of trying to put, well, what I would do is, right, you know right, I mean? right, 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 right. If you ask for that, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you. But like, sometimes you just gotta listen. You just gotta listen. I think that's dope. Um, but it's also important to 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 realize that. So that takes um, inflection, right? To to be able to see what what's what's up. But right. um, I know that you are a busy man, and I am not trying to capitalize all your time today. Um, so as we are wrapping up, I want to say thank you. I want to give you an opportunity to um, plug any projects you have going on or let us know how we can support you um, moving yeah. forward. What are the handles? What's coming up? Let us know. Let us know. Yeah. I mean, we're having a good conversation. So anything you want to ask me, <laughs> you're good to go. We're good, baby. But I think uh, I want to finish by saying that, that uh, you know, I, I really appreciate forums like this because again this gives people a good and safe space to kind of let some of those things off so thank you um and then also to going back to what you were talking about through the failures you start to realize what you do like mm. you know what I mean and, that's the, a good point. and the differences because I know sometimes and that's why I tell people take your time take it easy and you know because you might meet somebody or something or do something when you're about like 20 look I'm 29 I'm about to be 30 so 10 years gap you're going to have some changes. I always, so tell changes. People, I always tell people to break it down in fours because we kind of, we go through high school and then you go to college and maybe there's four and four. So by the time you're done with that two sets of four, you're eight years in almost a decade. You are not the same as when you were a freshman in high school. Well, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. <laughs> you shouldn't be. Because there are a few folks that might the questionable, be. Questionable, so you, right? You should not be. Yeah. So it's like, hopefully by the time you graduate and when you're a senior in college, you're different. But then again, you're going to just in the next thing, you're going to be a novice as well. So it's Mm -hmm. like, we're always in that learning pattern and 
we talk about mastery. We master the things and then we move on and then we become mm -hmm. a, an, a, almost an infant again in certain things. Yeah. You become so an like amateur and then you an become amateur, an expert. Yeah, an amateur, amateur and, an and expert. then the expert. Hey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Right. So, but um, we just finished, actually, Trevor just dropped the project and people don't really know, but I'm super involved in that process and okay. just excited and just as proud of that project as if it was my baby because it low-key is as well you know what i mean because we as a family really put uh alex is in here and she also helps us too it's yeah. a way and she's a part of the team born art team and it's like we're really trying to uh make this this gumbo and like just push it out so we're all proud of it so it's called the love language it's on uh every platform known to men uh, it's the best thing since sliced cheese. All right, sliced okay. bread. Uh, it's, it really is a great project. It's called the Love Language because we really wanted to get people to get more tapped in with what theirs is, how they mm -hmm. love. It's okay, like you said, from a from a male's perspective. Look, look, guys, it's cool to talk about this stuff. And mm -hmm. I think with R and B, just in general, it's cool. Yeah, we can be sexy and stuff, but like mm -hmm. talking about love too is is also sexy, you know. <laughs> Very sexy. Um, so, so important to talk about right, it. Right. Yes. So got that going on. I have some stuff too that I have uh, for solo projects. I'm working on other people's projects as well. Ashe re put me in touch with you. He yep. has some music coming. Like Love there's that. there's a bunch of things going on. We got clothes. We got videos. I mean, just just stay tuned to the page. I am like Trevor Jackson Five. We're killing it. Got it. All right. So we're going to put all the handles in the show notes so people who go back and listen are able yeah. to um, to follow up and super excited and thankful that you have done this with us today and yeah. excited um, yeah. for what's to come. Um, so the last question I ask every guest is um, for them to share with me um, a random fact, a random tidbit of information. Lost your for a second. As you know, I am the amateur expert, and so I claim to know a little bit about a lot. So if you could please share with me one random fact, tidbit, any anything, just something. About something that I know? Oh. Yeah, so just like a, but just like a random fact. It could be your favorite quote. Um, oh, just, like, like a random like a, fact. Like a snapshot oh. fact or something like okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. Um, dang, this is a good one. Someone said, let me know this, about this... the pain factory. <laughs> that's, that's my boy. We played ball together. And whenever we'd play, we'd, we'd like go at it and practice. And he'd foul me because that's the only way he could guard me. He'd hack me all the time. And he called the pain factory. But, you know, we, we made, we, we put banners up in the pain factory, you know, made out of silks. But uh, one fun fact, if you guys didn't know, I'm, uh, I'm actually into, I like whatever I like to do, I like to get into it. So it's like with, you know, alcohol or something like that. Like, um, fun fact, it's Hennessy is called Cognac because it's from the province of Cognac in Paris. There's a place actually called Cognac, just like there's a place called Tequila, Mexico. So fun fact for you guys, it's made out of grapes. Tequila is made out of agave. If you didn't know. That was just oh, the that. first thing that I could, I could think that, of off the top of my head. That is perfect. Um, yeah. Perfect. I didn't know that, actually. A lot of right. times people give facts, and, and I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. But I yeah, knew it. People I be like, oh, I'm trying to drink that cognac. That cognac. But cognac's actually a place. I didn't know that that's, either. That's dope. Well, again, thank you. We are going to put all of your information in the show notes so that people can support and follow right. what's, what's, what's coming next. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. And uh, thank you. Oh, we have to be still and smile for like five seconds so that there's okay. a good still oh, okay, okay. the show, right? Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. All right. So All right. ready, set, go. Go. Perfect. All right, guys. Thank you. Be good to yourself and be good to others. Peace. Peace.